welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VII, but On This Day in Tudor History, 21st of November 1495, churchman, Protestant playwright, historian and Bishop of Ossory, John Bale, was born at Cove near Dunwich in Suffolk. Bale wrote 24 plays, but his most famous work is his Illustrium Majoris Britanniae Scriptorum. It's actually got a much longer title than that, but my Latin doesn't allow me to go on. It translates to a summary of the famous writers of Great Britain, that is, of England, Wales and Scotland, which was his effort to record every work by a British author. It's actually a work I've often used in my research on Tudor poets and authors. Well, I've actually used translations of it. Let me tell you a bit more about this accomplished Tudor man. John Bale was the son of Henry Bale and his wife Margaret, who were apparently of humble origins. He was educated at Norwich's Carmelite Priory from the age of 12, before moving on to Jesus College, Cambridge, and then he travelled abroad and studied at Louvain and Toulouse. He was awarded a Bachelor of Theology from Cambridge in 1529 and then a Doctorate in Theology in around 1531. Bale was made Prior of the Whitefriars in Malden in Essex in 1530, then the Carmelites of Ipswich in 1533, and he was made Prior of Doncaster in 1534. In the 1530s, Bale converted to Protestantism due to the influence of his patron, East Anglian peer Thomas, 1st Baron Wentworth of Nettlestead. Bale managed to escape conviction for heresy in 1534 after being charged with it. He'd preached against the invocation of saints in a sermon at Doncaster and was hauled before the Archbishop of York. In 1536, he left his posts at Doncaster and Ipswich, renounced his vows and married a widow named Dorothy. He became a priest at Thorndon in Suffolk in 1536, and a year later he was arrested for heresy after denouncing papistry in a sermon he preached. Antiquarian John Leyland, who was close to Henry VIII and supported Bale in his work, interceded on his behalf, and he was released. Bale was also close to Thomas Cromwell, so that may well have helped his cause too. Bale led a troupe of actors who performed allegorical morality plays in support of Protestantism, and this troupe was supported by Cromwell. Bale wrote 24 plays, including Three Laws of Nature, Moses and Christ, Corrupted by the Sodomites, Pharisees and Papists Most Wicked, A Tragedy or Interlude Manifesting the Chief Promises of God Unto Man, The Temptation of Our Lord, a brief comedy or interlude of John Baptist's preaching in the wilderness, etc., and King John. King John was performed at the home of Thomas Cramner, Archbishop of Canterbury in 1538, and it flattered King Henry VIII for attacking papal tyranny and breaking with Rome. Several of his plays were composed under Thomas Cromwell's patronage. In 1539, Bale fled into exile abroad with his wife and children, following the reversal in Henry VIII's religious policy and the Act of the Six Articles. On the continent, he wrote a number of anti-Catholic works, examining the treatment of Protestant martyrs, including Anne Askew. His works were used as a source by martyrologist John Fox. Bale also used his work to attack Stephen Gardner, Bishop of Winchester, for his persecution of Protestants and risked trouble by organising the smuggling of religious tracts into England. His major work, Illustrium Majoris blah blah blah, I'm not going to say it again, was published in Vessel in 1548. Bale returned to England in Edward VI's reign, residing at the Duchess of Richmond's house in London with John Fox. In 1551, he was granted the living of Bishop Stoke in Hampshire and then made vicar of Swatham in Norfolk. In 1552, King Edward VI made him Bishop of Ossory in Ireland and he was consecrated in Dublin in February 1553, causing controversy by refusing the traditional Catholic rites of consecration. 
He also had boys act out his morality plays in Kilkenny on Sunday afternoons. Although he caused controversy, he did manage to do what John Dudley, Duke of Northumberland, Lord President of Edward's Council, wanted him to do. He converted a number of people with his preaching. He lived in Kilkenny until the accession of the Catholic Queen Mary I in the summer of 1553, which led to him attempting to flee into exile once more. He set sail from Dublin for the Netherlands in September 1553, but was intercepted and taken prisoner on a Dutch man of war. The ship had to dock at St Ives in Cornwall due to bad weather, and Bale was arrested there, accused of treason, but then released. He was arrested once more at Dover when he tried to leave the country again. But although he was held for several weeks, he managed to pay his way out and was able to travel on to the continent. While in exile, he focused on his writing and in Frankfurt in September 1554, he took part in the disputations among the Protestant exiles there. He returned to England after the accession of Elizabeth I and in 1560, he was made a canon of a prebend of Canterbury Cathedral. In 1561, he published an attack on Edmund Bonner, the Catholic Bishop of London, and in 1563, he attended convocation. However, he was dead by the 26th of November, 1563, and was laid to rest at Canterbury. And now a bit of trivia for those of you who are interested in the Boleyn family. John Bale wrote of George Boleyn, Lord Rochford, brother of Queen Anne Boleyn, describing his rhythmos elegantissimos, that's hard to say, and how George was the author of some of the most elegant poetry of the age. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a Tudor explorer who made three voyages to the New World and sadly died of gangrene after being shot. Do make sure you're subscribed. Click just there and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 21st of November 1559, Frances Grey, Duchess of Suffolk and mother of Queen Jane, or Lady Jane Grey, died at Richmond. Frances, daughter of Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk and Mary Tudor, Queen of France, has gone down in history as a rather harsh and abusive mother. But I told you all about the woman who was once named in Edward VI's device for the succession in last year's video. You can find a link to that in the description. I also introduced Teasel the dog who had just joined us. And I think Ari the cat features in that video too. Now you really need to watch that one, don't you? Take care. Don't forget to leave a comment if you want and to give me a like as well. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>